Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. The Vermont Supreme Court is the highest judicial authority in our state. The court's five justices make final decisions in appeals arising from any case in a Vermont court. Despite its importance, the judiciary is the least understood branch of our system of government. So to learn more, we've called on a Vermont Supreme Court justice who spent 22 years on the bench before her retirement in May of 2019. It's a pleasure to welcome the Honorable Marilyn Scoglin. Oh, wow. Thank so you. Even though um, it sounds like there's they're not quite letting you retire. Not quite. <laughs> I'm still on the bench, <laughs> so yeah. um, uh, working a, a bit. So, so that's just a very basic thing. Okay. What differences and similarities from the Vermont Supreme Court to the U.S. Supreme Court, which we hear a lot about? That's the biggest difference. The Vermont Supreme Court, we don't, we'd have to take every case that comes to us from the environmental court, the criminal court, family court, civil court, uh, public service board. Right. We have to take every case that that someone appeals. This United States Supreme Court is a court of certiorari. They get to look at the briefing, decide whether they want to hear the case or not, whether it's got mm. important uh, issues that would be uh, ripple across the other states. So right. we have to take everything. They can be very selective. So what do you mean by take everything? I mean, how do legal cases get there? Anybody who appeals, it goes to the Vermont Supreme Indeed, Court? Indeed, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> OK. so. How many cases is that? Well, what are we there's talking? <coughs> probably 500 are filed every year. This is a rough estimate. We, a couple, oh, a couple, about 25 years ago, we instituted something called the Rocket Docket. So the cases that are present single issues, we've written about the issue many times before. No new precedent is going to be, uh, be, be created with our decision. That case goes on the rocket docket where three justices, as opposed to five, oh. hear the case and issue a short decision on them. So that takes care of half the cases that are filed. Other cases drop off for various reasons. So then the five justices hear the cases once a month in a three-day term, a half-hour arguments, mm -hmm. and then we write the, the opinions, and those are given um, uh, longer dissertations about the law that's being discussed. Right, and all five have to be there at that. Indeed. And for the three, for the shorter things, those are just chosen. It's, it's going to be you three this, this time yes, for this. Yes, all They're random. Kinda all, all pretty random. So what do the lower courts do then? What, what, is, what do you mean what do they well, do? Well, the district courts. I mean, how does that, how do, how do they come into play? Do, do they, what role do they play? Well, they're the ones that are hearing the actual evidence actual in the case. Original cases. Indeed. They okay. hear the case, they hear the witnesses, they hear the attorney's argument, you know, and presentation of evidence. When it comes up to us, we don't have evidence, we don't have witnesses. We just hear the attorneys telling us what went wrong down below. Ah. We've, they, we've got read their briefs, their briefs come in from both sides saying the trial court erred in this issue. It let this evidence in, shouldn't have happened. It, it neglected to charge the jury in a proper manner. Uh, whatever issue they think f is a flaw in the lower court's decision, that's what they come to us for us to decide whether it was right or wrong. Right, whether we So you're really the whether, bottom line with is what, is, what is the legal statute here? Right. Whether you know, and so we either reverse it and say, try it again, do it over, this was wrong, <laughs> or we affirm it and say, yeah, they, they did a fine job. Ah, great. So each justice selects their own law clerk, yes. their assistant. What is the role of law clerks, and, and what are the qualifications you want to see in one? I have had the best law clerks ever. They all, I, when I'm interviewing them for the position, I tell them they're going to be my best friend for a year. Because after I, perhaps oddly and rarely, when I get annoyed with my colleagues, I can go into my office, shut the door with my law clerk, and say, what are they thinking? <laughs> what are they thinking? Um, they help draft opinions, and they help edit the opinions I draft. So we, the way I work, we, we pretty much share writing duties. And they um, do the motion practice that comes in because besides the cases, there's a lot of motion practice for well, extensions what does that mean? of time. Motion practice. I I'm moving for an extension of time for this brief. Ah. I'm moving to have this brief be 
twice as long as the law's rule, rule requires. Mm -hmm. I'm moving to disqualify this, this brief because that evidence wasn't presented below. So these are all legal issues mm -hmm. we have to decide, and they usually help draft those responses. Right. right. Um, and, and they have to listen to you behind those closed doors. Indeed they do. <laughs> <laughs> and they all adore you. Every one that I've ever met that has worked with you adores you. Well, I adore them. They're brilliant <laughs> and they keep me level and sane. Okay, so um, court statistics for 2018, which mm -hmm. is when you were still serving, show that the Supreme Court Justice has authored 154 opinions. Um, Court justices, uh, of those 154, I think 21 were dissenting opinions. So what is a dissenting opinion and how does, how does that work? Considering that when a case gets up to the Supreme Court, there's usually a real issue. Mm. Uh, it, cases that are pretty cut and dried don't come up on appeal that often. So if there's a real issue on what did the legislature mean when it, you chose that language for a statute, um, we can disagree. Uh, what is the, do these facts justify the jury's finding of guilt? We can disagree. So a ma majority, we will hear the oral arguments, and this court does, we don't discuss things before we go out on the bench. Hmm. We go out on the bench, we hear the oral argument, we come back into the chambers, and who's ever been assigned to write that opinion will give their uh, presentation about how they think it should be decided and then we go around the room and we offer our own opinions this and is this is not in the bench in a, in a public space no but in it's a, in the it's conference conference it's okay confidential yeah. so if if I disagree with what the majority the way they're going I will write I'll say well I'm going to dissent and so then I wait for the majority opinion or I start writing right away because it's a, law, a legal issue and I know what I think. So yeah. you don't have to wait for the majority to come out before you can draft your dissent. So, but drafting a dissent would be important. So you have a majority and this is the reason why they're doing it, but you want to say, well, I disagree and this is, and this is why. And exactly. I just want to make that clear. Exactly. I think the majority is misreading the legislative intent. I think the majority is substituting its own opinion for that of the trial court, and we owe them discretion. So it's it's a, and that becomes important maybe down the line when somebody for, wants to yes. if, if something similar comes up again. Exactly, they can read your dissent and and see what where you are coming from at that time. Right, and then the composition of the court can change, and they can go argue uh, uh, the issues again. Right. So interesting. So um, in in this nation of laws, um, help us understand how those differences of opinion really, really, really work about what the law is. I mean, does it mean we're stuck or? Uh, oh no, uh, you've got five justices bringing five legal careers to the table to say, this is how I understand the law. Different interpretation. Yeah, but we're all confined by stare decisis. What we've said in the past goes on and you don't want to overrule a decision that you just issued three years ago. Mm -hmm. That kind of sounds flippant. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So stare decisis, giving honor and respect to what the court has interpreted the law to mean in the past. In the past. But, but accommodating changes in culture and time and legislative action, you know, sure. paying attention Civil to unions. that. Yeah. Um, among other things. Um, so it is not necessarily important that there's a unanimous ruling. Mm -mm. But I don't know what the stats say, but we're pretty much. You, you usually are. We usually are. Yeah. 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 Uh, so what goes on in that, you know, in that back room <laughs> as you're trying, do, you know, do you, do you really work your ideas on, on the other judges or do you really work each other? What goes on behind closed doors? The, the, the majority, the one who's been assigned the majority, and by the way, that is random. Other states, the Chief Justice will assign various other justices to write various opinions. Here, mm -hmm. it's totally random. Our administrative assistant goes one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> one, two, three, four, hat. five, so that oh, wow. we don't get, uh, we don't claim a case where the issue is something that we particularly thrive on. Right. So they'll give their opinion and we go around in uh, order of um, seniority. So the least senior justice will go next, and they'll say, well, I agree with your response on issue one, but on issue two, I'm having trouble with that jury instruction. I think it was, it went too far or it didn't mm -hmm. go far enough, and 
then we go around and sometimes by the time we're done talking about this case and pulling it apart there's four people who want to reverse it and the majority opinion the, the first the person originally who said is now going to write a dissent or unless we have convinced them because of our arguments right. and our interpretation that we were right and that he missed something and then maybe we'll get a unanimity right so it's a it's a hearty, excellent discussion, but I, I will say the Vermont Supreme Court collegiality is superb. Great. So, so how long How long is that? Does that take hours or days? Or no, no. That w we get off the bench and we have like, we'll hear two cases for an hour mm -hmm. and then we'll conference for a half hour. But oh. that doesn't stop it because once the draft opinion of the first, the first opinion goes out, it circulates to all the other justices for our review. And we can at that point say, nope, I don't agree with this analysis of issue number two. Right. And it goes, it circulates, it circulates right. until we can get to a place where everybody is comfortable with the language that was chosen, which the approach, with the approach that was chosen. And if you can't get comfortable, you write a dissent. So, so that can go on for months, right. months. Huh, wow. So we're almost out of time, but activist judges, it's, it's like a buzzword now. Are, are you guys really about the law? No, we're about the law. We are not a result-oriented court. We struggle. We hate some decisions we write. Hmm. I mean, I, you know, so the, the phrase you hear in court is, I'll hold my nose and sign that, because <laughs> that's what the law requires. Right. We wish it was different. Justice Marilyn Scoglin, <laughs> thank you so much for coming with us and uh, getting us a little bit ah. more understanding about the law. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Uh -huh.